Namaskar. Namaskar. Um, my question is, what are your thoughts on psychics that use spirits to tell the future? Do they kind of mess with your future if you have these psychic things? I don't think it's a matter of messing a future directly, but when a psychic is, let's say, tarot readers mm -hmm. or crystal gazers, pendulum readers, guided by spirits, they're guided by disembodied beings who have a greater <coughs> experience of timelessness and therefore also an ability to tune in into, into the future actually. The thing is that you can never be entirely sure about what is being said and so it can be sometimes of solace and comfort but Ayushman Bhava. But it is dealing with spirit, so one has to be careful. Mainly the readers have to be careful because very often they take inputs from spirits, but they don't offer something in exchange. And then they can anger the spirits. I mean anger quote unquote because many readers don't understand that these are disembodied beings. It's not spirit. These are precise beings that are connecting with them and that they are using also. So there has to be a giving in return and unless they know how to do that, they might also have to pay heavy prices sometimes, in health mainly, in not living a life fully. Many people who engage with spirits, they they die very young, they don't live out their entire lifespans. So one has to be a bit respectful, you know, it's like when people go to a house and they are clearing that house of the spirits and they have sage and they have all of these things or you rent an apartment and then you clear out all the spirits but the fact of the matter is that those spirits have lived there longer than you have and just because you have a contract doesn't mean anything maybe they have a different kind of contract so one has to be very careful and very respectful when one is dealing with spirits and maybe request them and actually best is to just leave them to do what they do, you do what you do. You're an embodied being, so there's no need to mess around with spirits unless you are doing some real service to society. For example, the shamans, they had their place in society because they supported people in times of distress by taking help from spirits, but they also knew or know how to return to the spirits what the spirits need as well. So it's very often people do one side of the thing but not the other side. So that's not a clever thing to do. In general, it's always better to be very careful when one is dealing with spirits, you know. If you're getting it bred by a psychic, is it um, unhealthy to do if you're going to a psychic and they're reading you? Sometimes when you're in a state of deep confusion maybe, or sadness, or unable to bear the moment and its pain. The first thing is to surrender to the soul and to move into that, but sometimes a system is not able to do these practices and so it can bring some solace and some comfort to go and listen to a psychic and what they have to say. It is not always of much help, but it also gives a feeling of some hope. Certainly it is a play of the ego, but what I feel is that if one starts to go mad by identifying everything as a play of the ego, that's not what this practice is. It is about a certain ease also, and if it eases the pain sometimes a little bit to go and talk to a psychic or a reader, I feel that lies within the sanity of human existence to, to move into those things. In the long run it is of course not something which, which will actually move you to the soul because even if let's say you have this story which you mentioned yesterday about this man that left you and you cannot get him out of your head for months and it's every day, all the time. I uh, early on spoke to a psychic about the situation, she's like, definitely, 
I will be, we will be getting married. And I had a lot of sessions with her. I believed it, and I also was speaking to the psychic. So I felt in my head, was it was I just listening to someone making me believe something, and it wasn't all accurate. Um, and then when it happened, I tried to speak to her, and she just disappeared. Like, she wouldn't. Um, so I just wanted, they just picturing stuff and putting things together, or is it, is it fake, or is it just like a money-making thing, or like... It's all of what you've said. It's, it's not necessarily fake. It can be only for money-making. It can be not necessarily for money-making. There are psychics who actually are able to be very, very precise in their predictions, and it holds and holds and holds and holds. You have everything in that mix. The point is not all those things. The point is yourself. It's about you. If you actually really listen to what I'm saying, like, let it penetrate into your thinking that if you tune into the soul and if you are in surrender to the soul and you come into your coherence, that person or that man or that woman or whoever it is will respond very differently to you because the soul, because when you are in connect with that soul, that other soul feels that connect. So that is very important not to forget. As far as psychics go, there are many psychics who are very powerful. Through the Trikala Drishti, they are able to receive information which is that precise, that it's breathtaking and continuously precise. So these are abilities of Trikala Drishti, the ability to actually move into a state of consciousness where you're able to see past, present and future. You know? So that exists, but you also have psychics who communicate with spirits, many who communicate with Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Shamuel, many of these ancient archetypical spirits, actually. And so one cannot know for sure what each one is actually capable of. The only thing you can know for sure is that your spirit, which is your soul, is what you can connect with. That you can be sure of, because you can feel it. So, while sometimes it can be harmful, as has happened to you, where you have somehow believed something and then been shocked, but it could also be that she was right. Not everything has happened already. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so just... Since yesterday, I've been practicing what you... And I was trying to do it last 24 hours. Um, I know you, this is like your last session, so I just wanted to ask you because I'm not sure when I'll see you next. But how do you know if you're doing it right or not? It takes some time, but it's better to do it than not to do it. Okay. Because if you don't do it, then it's like it has been till now. It takes some time because the ego is very nice and healthy and big and fat and has lots of layers of... Just keep on pursuing, it's a sadhana. Sadhana means a practice. Sometimes they stand on one leg for ten years and a hand up in the air, you see them in the Kumbha Mela. You ask them, Sadhu, Swamiji, aap ye kyun kar rahe ho? Why are you doing this? They say, Guruji ne bola, isle hum kar rahe. My Guru said to stand on one leg with a hand up, so I'm doing it. For so many years, he said, huh, he told me to wait till he comes back. So ten years have passed, twelve years, he's standing like that. That is called sadhana, tapas shakti. You keep on doing it, you keep on practicing tuning into the soul. It's not going to happen yesterday. It's not going to happen so fast always because you have to first put in the tapas shakti to do it. So even if you think it's wrong... It... What have you done before you knew about your soul? So you have nothing to lose. And after a while you... you... you persevere and suddenly one day it will just be there and you'll know it. Because there are many others who know it, you know. It's not the only one sitting on this chair who has that experience. There are lots of them who have this experience, even sitting in this room, and they, they live from that experience. When they are unsure about something, they ask, is this the right thing for me to do? They actually ask that question, they get a yes or a no and they go with it. And sometimes they don't go with it because they're not strong enough and there's fear and then again they go with it and they keep on training themselves to deepen that experience of soul. 
And then the guru comes after eleven years and says, now stand on the other leg and put the other hand up and put that leg and hand down. That's not happening here, right? So it takes some time, but you also have no choice because you have that man in your head. And he's in your head because you are not with your heart. And I'm very sure about what I'm saying. I'm a million percent sure that if you start to move into that knowledge of Self, all those souls around will start to tune in with you more. Because technically seen, he can message you, no? He can say, Hi. Even if he's engaged, he can say, Hi. But that also he's not doing. And that's the point, and he will do it if you are with yourself. He's not doing it because he's pushing you to yourself. That suffering is pushing you to yourself, that particular kind of suffering. It has a specific raison d'etre, that suffering, it's pushing you to yourself and it is not something to be happy about to have that suffering, but it's happening because you're not tuning into Source. Mark my words, if you do that, you will hear from this man, because he will feel that everyone... everyone feels when one is connected with Soul, they feel it. People are that sensitive, that they feel when the other one is actually sitting in tune with the Soul and then they're not afraid to approach, because they don't want to see pain, they want to see love. And you're in pain now, but it'll go away.